it's time for TV Skywriter. And you will hear some people say that it's for the renovation of Maine, but I like to describe it as the transformation of Maine. Mm -hmm. Because with this $44.3 million, we would be able to really do Maine Library completely over. The only thing that would remain is the beams and the structural foundation. Beyond that, it would be a complete completely new building. It's just not easier just to tear it down and then build a new one? Yes, the architects and engineering and doing their homework related to this to use the structural foundation and beam will be a savings of two to $2.4 million. So it makes a big difference. And fortunate for us, the people that built the library some 35 years ago, made it where the top level can accommodate a fourth floor. So it really is a, a true savings. So they already knew it was going to expand or they guessed that it, that it might, huh? I think we were just fortunate to have some visionary folks in the past. How about that? Because I, I know when the Chicago main library was, um, when they were looking at different buildings, they tried to choose a building where they can add a floor to it. And I, I remember the engineers saying that the particular building that they had chosen um, could not withstand the, I guess, the forces or the weight or whatever. So we are lucky that we the main are, library structure can um, can accommodate an extra floor. Yes, we are very lucky in that. Um, when the architects were working with us, it was the program that really determine if the building would go up in additional square footage or if it would go out in size. And it will actually be a combination. Currently, it is 65,000 square feet. And we will be adding an additional almost 20,000 square feet. So when the project is finished, we will have a 84, almost 85,000 square feet, um, square foot main library. It's exciting. Nice. <laughs> Now, folks, you can actually see what the plans, um, actually, I don't know if these are the final plans or not, but I went to durhamcountylibrary.org slash transformation Maine, and I saw some drawings. They were so outstanding. I could not imagine that you could pull it off because it looks unrecognizable. Can, can you tell us some of the new features we can expect? Yes, the renderings are pretty breathtaking. Um, it's right now just conceptual design, and there's still a lot of work that will need to happen to finalize, but that's very close to what we will have as a main library if this bond passes on November 8th. Um, the library is going to have so many exciting things, but one thing that I want people to remember is that the book will still be there. I've had some people ask, there's a focus on technology. What about the book? Well, the traditional book will still exist, but we will have an increased amount of technology. Um, that's one of the reasons a main transformation is needed. We can't accommodate any more technology here at Maine Library right now. And that is a very difficult thing to know when we know that there's such a digital divide. So some of the things that will be included is a STEAM Literacy Center, and that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. We will have um, meeting room space for our community to use, as well as for our programs. Um, our auditorium space will be able to accommodate 300 people. That is pretty amazing. Yeah, when uh, I saw so, the drawing for the auditorium, I was blown away. Yes, and one, one cool thing about those drawings also is the, the seats are able to retract back. So we can go from having these 300 chairs for people to sit in to pulling it back and still having our friends' book sales and things happen in that same space in a flat area. That's part of what we're trying to do is make sure that there's a lot of flexibility and that we're building a library that will really stand the test of time and, and keep up with the future trends that are out there. 
Um, we'll also be expanding our North Carolina collection. And our librarian now, Lynn Richardson, who has been with us for many years, is preparing to retire. And this is almost like a gift to her to know that if this bond passes and we get a renovated main library, that there'll be additional space for the North Carolina collection to really highlight the things that we have here. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and that's very deserving. Um, Lynn Richardson, um, I, I hate to see her go, but I guess everybody has to retire sometime. But I she know. convinced me to donate our family treasures, so to speak, to the Durham County Library. So now um, my family collection's in there. Well, that's great. Thank you. We really appreciate that. And if anyone watching is interested in donating their papers to Durham County Library or anything that you consider as that treasure, please let us know. We'd be glad to accept those documents. Awesome. Um, now, is STEAM the same as the Maker Lab? Because Faith, the teen librarian, showed me this um, this small but very cool maker lab that was recently opened in the in the teen area on the first floor yes yes well i guess i would have to say yes and no um we're using the disciplines of steam because we know regardless of what year it is in the future there are always going to be those disciplines for people to learn from and that will be throughout the fabric of the new library. So it won't necessarily just be in one location that you can only experience STEAM. It'll be throughout. But then we will also have a separate maker lab and it will focus on those same disciplines, um, but in a different way. So we would have coding, robotics, um, raspberry Pi, and I don't mean the pie that you eat. This is all related to oh. technology and creating many computers and things oh, of that okay. nature. Yes. <laughs> no raspberry Pi at the new library. <laughs> That's fantastic because Faith was showing me the, she, she was explaining to me how, it was, I don't know anything about the 3D printing and all that, but she said that when the new library is um, built, constructed, reconstructed, um, you know, with the laser and the 3D printing and all that, it's going to be really, really exciting, especially for kids because they're learning this stuff in school. Exactly. And we do have um, a couple of 3D printers now, but this will allow us to have more 3D printers. Um, and it's amazing what you can do with that. You can, I've seen bookmarks created from 3D printers. It's using a kind of plastic or wire to make this happen. We'll also explore having wood cutting um, and even some basic things like sewing machines that would would be in there. It really is about creating and designing and just development and play, but all in a way that you're able to learn and um, really prepare for the future. Amazing. I, I want to talk about books just a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, so for the most part, the Durham County Library has access to books like for example if one of the library branches like this let's say Stanford Warren has a book but you live on the south end of town it could be the book can be transferred and you can pick it up at the south regional if you need to but yes. I also understand that with the Durham County Library you can get books from outside of the system somehow that is correct. We have an internal courier system, like you described, where you can get books from one location to the next. But we also have a resource known as Interlibrary Loan. And with that, if there's a book that we do not have here at Durham County, we will look throughout North Carolina and even throughout the United States to see if that book is available somewhere else. And we'll bring it here for your usage. So it's a great resource. And right now we're a lending site for other locations, other libraries, and also we check out the items as well. And you can also make books available um, via e-readers too, right? Yes, that's correct. By using your tablets, we, ha we do have the e-books for people to use as well. That is so modern. I love that. But I have one more question about this. I read that the main library in New York City 
in Manhattan has some kind of a station where you can somehow order, I'm trying to think of the right terminology, like a, a book on demand and print okay. it at the library. Will you be able to do that? I'm not familiar with that resource right now, not to actually print it on demand. Um, we are exploring some ways of checking out books through vending machines and stuff of that nature when we're closed, but that isn't anything that's a definite yet. It's going to depend on the, co the cost and how far we can stretch our dollars, but I'd be interested in finding out about printing a book out on demand. That's, that's pretty cool. It sounds cool, although I can imagine that's a lot of paper, though. It's it does sound like a lot of paper. <laughs> so I don't, it might be smarter to do it electronically. You know, I wonder, will there ever be a time when the library will be able to lend out e-readers like Kindles? Because I was just thinking, what about low-income people or people who just don't have internet at home? Um, would there be a way for them to um, get access to books electronically from the library? Yes, we are hoping to move into that more. We have tried checking out um, Kindles at one point with book clubs, but we are exploring how we can check out tablets and possibly Wi-Fi hotspots. But again, right now, this is in the research phase to see how much it would cost, how we can um, kind of control some of the things that are on the devices and make it more beneficial. Um, mostly what we're, we're working to target with is for the kids so they can use it for a homework resource. So we're exploring that and I'm hoping by the time we would reopen that we would have that in place if not before we close, um, so that people can use that during the time we're closed. Okay. Now, getting back to the bond referendum, um, you know, this is going to happen on election day, number 8th. So you said there's four entities. You said Durham Tech, Durham County Library. What are the other two? Durham Public Schools and the Museum of Life and Science. Okay, so is it an all for one? It's, it's not like you choose which one to vote for, right? Or are all they four? are listed? They are listed individually. So to make your selection, you would have to vote for each one individually. Oh, I didn't think you were competing. Well, it's not competing because we really are sharing our story together. But it is possible that you know one area could pass the bond and another area could not. Okay. But the best way for it to benefit Durham County as a community is for all four areas to be approved. I agree. I, I really agree because I, I can't see making it without any of those, you know, without any of those four entities. Right. It's also very important with, when it comes to education. Right. And we partner together a lot with, you know, all of those entities. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking positive for all of us. Okay, so let's get back to um, improvements at the at the main library, and this is if this does pass, and I, I trust that it will. So, when will the library be closed, and will all the books be shipped out and sent to the different regional libraries? So, if the bond passes, we would be closing in early 2017, and by early, I do mean sometime in January. Um, the books would be um, stored at Duke Storage. That's where we would be working with a contract for that to happen. We've used Duke Storage in the past as we've renovated or done extra work with our other regionals. So that's where we would use now. Um, some of those books would, however, go to the different locations to make sure that if there's a need that, that they're being distributed and not just sitting in storage. Okay, so I know that there's about 60 computers at the main library. Will those also be um, divvied up among the different, the, you know, the different libraries around town? No, unfortunately, they won't necessarily be able to go to the different libraries just because of capacity at each location. There may be a few that can go out to the locations. 
but we're working on our outreach efforts for during the time that we're closed. And while all of this hasn't been finalized, we do know that having access to computers and internet is a very important thing for our customers. So we are exploring places um, in the downtown area that we would have computers for the public during that time. Oh, definitely keep me posted. I, I think that's <laughs> so important. Definitely. You're absolutely right. Because you can walk into any of the libraries and all the computers are pretty much taken. Exactly. All I always days. joke it's amazing if our computers go down, it's like someone has told them and the computer room is just empty. But once they come back up, it fills up just almost instantly. <laughs> I, 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 I do hope you find a place downtown. I, I feel confident that we will, and we're in conversations, but again, nothing has been finalized yet, but I'm confident that we'll be able to offer this resource to the, the downtown community. Okay, I really hope so. Okay, um, so closed in early 2017, and then how long would it take for the new building to be, well, I guess we should call it a, you said transformation, not renovation. Yes, transformation. Um, if we close to the public in 2017, then we are looking at um, construction in some form would begin most likely around March or April. Um, it may be small scale. It may not be necessarily visible to everyone just driving by that construction starts. And then we would be closed for about two years. So that's why it's so important for us to plan out this outreach efforts that we'll have so we can make sure during those two years that we are still serving the public the way they need to be served. I really hope so. Uh, and also, being from Chicago, I have to point out that this happened in Chicago where the main library was shut down, but I think a lot of it was unfortunately political. And I remember the main library being absolutely closed. Everything was inaccessible for more than five years because throughout my entire high school um, career, um, I couldn't go to the library, at least not the main library. And that was a real shame. That, that is, that's very unfortunate. Um, while this library will be closed for the sake of the, the transformation, we will still be providing resources. You know, there'll be programs that are going on. There'll be, um, you know, opportunities for people to use our computers, to check out books, to check out DVDs, and we'll be utilizing our outreach services even more. You've probably seen our destination literacy vehicles driving throughout Durham. So oh, we will yeah, I went to the great unveiling. It was at Northgate Mall. You right. Know, I'd, um, I guess we used to call them bookmobiles. Exactly, exactly. And they're still a bookmobile of, of sorts, but um, we've given them a cool name and really emphasizing that literacy component because that's what we're about, making a difference in literacy for our community, be it reading or um, technology, health literacy, financial literacy. But those vehicles and the staff that drive them will be going out to more places in the community. So while our doors are closed and you can't come to us here, we'll be going to you in the community. I love, I mean, they have thousands of books. Yes. Thousands. Yes. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I might be mistaken, but I think they're going to be at the Durham Center for Senior Life tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. I, I believe it is. Absolutely. I think that's tomorrow, Thursday at 11. I think you're right. Okay. Do you happen to have a schedule of um, the literacy mobile? I do not have a schedule with me right on hand, but that information is available, I believe, on our website. So oh, okay. users can find it that way by doing, going to the Durham County Library website. Um, and if you do have questions beyond that, just calling the library and we'll gladly assist you with that. Okay. So how can we help you? I know you want us to vote for the referendum, of course, but how can we help you um, get the word out? Because I've seen the signs on the streets, you know, um, they're along with the political signs and it says for referendums. They don't say what they are because after all, they know that we're driving down the street and can't read an entire sign. So I know it's 
it's on the minds of people. I'm sure they're noticing the signs saying four referendums, but how can we really help you spread the information? Well, and, and as a county employee, I can't um, say vote for the bond, but what I can do is educate and inform about the bond. And what we need most is really continuous support of our library system um, and really just sharing the message about what this transformation will mean, not just for our library, not just for the downtown community, but for Durham as a whole. It really is getting the word out, sharing your library experience, what it means to you, how we've impacted you. And I think conversations of that nature really help us tell the story of how Durham County Library makes a difference. And that's what makes people remember us when they go to the ballot, to the election site, um, and they see the library and they think about those personal stories and they think about the impact that we're having. We're more than brick and mortar. We're life changing in what we do in the community, whether it's a young child that started off shy coming to story time and after a few visits, they're learning to engage more with other kids to the young child that is having trouble reading and they're being tutored by some of our um, adult or other high school students here to help them improve. It's, it's just life changing. It really is. And there are a lot of things available at the library that a lot of people are not aware of. Like you just said, tutoring. And I heard there's a waiting list, but yes, tutoring. Also, yes. you can check out um, and you can view movies, live streamed movies, I believe. That is absolutely correct. Um, I wanted to mention something that you said about tutoring. Um, right now, there is a waiting list of 30 plus students. And this is specifically here for the main library. We are currently tutoring um, 80 plus students and they've been matched up with high school kids or other adults, be it retired teachers or, you know, other teachers or people in the community that have the skills to help with tutoring. And this is making such a difference and it's so great to see the different generations sitting together in the library, being tutored on reading, if it's improving their writing skills, helping with math, homework. It, it's just a joy to, to watch that in, in action. It also helps the, the tutor. Yes. Because what better way to stay on the right path if you're a high school student <laughs> than having a little one or a younger student looking up to you? You know, you're you are absolutely right. I had not thought of it in that that way, but it is. It's a win for the student uh, being tutored and the person doing the tutoring. Absolutely. And another thing, I think we have maybe one more minute. I'd like to mention some other things that you might not be aware of in terms of the library. Um, there's um, job skill help. You can um, look up jobs on their computers, and sometimes there's workshops, aren't there? Exactly. We have workshops on resume writing, workshops on how to use a mouse, you know, just the basics of computer or how to use Word, Excel or PowerPoint, all the things that can help you improve, be it in your job or searching for, for a job. And they're all free, aren't they? You don't have of to course, pay. they are free. They are absolutely free. All you need is your library card um, to come in and sign into our computer um, and you're all set. Oh, one more question. Speaking of library sure. cards, um, for those of us who might not have a library card and might not be aware of what it takes, what do you do? Do you still bring in like, um, you know, um, like a pay stub or electrical bill or utility bill stub? We ask done? that you bring in a picture ID and another form of ID if you don't have a picture ID so you can get a library card. And it is free to Durham County residents, but if you happen to live outside of Durham, you can still get a card. It's just for the cost of $45, but your return on investment for that $45 is you're paid over and over again. Now, I'm assuming that each um, Durham Public School student has a library card, right? Well, I would like to say that every Durham Public School student has a card, um, but that's not the case right now. But Durham County Library and Durham Public School were actually partnering, 
partnering together now to make the student ID work as a library card. Ooh, so, good idea. Yeah, we're, we're really hoping to make that work. This is part of the Connect Ed Challenge that has been issued by the Obama administration. So um, this is happening in Charlotte and a few other neighboring um, counties, and we're trying to be part of that, that movement. So right now we're in conversations with Durham Public Schools to see how we can make our IT and their IT talk together to make this process work. So that's I'm confident great. it will happen. It's just working through all the logistics right now. I understand, and that's great. And I've also, I just want to throw in one more thing. I have noticed classes and activities for homeschool students also, not just yes. public school students. So. Yes, that's a growing population, and we're, we're here to serve everyone. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Tammy Baggett, for being on the show. So she did point out, as a county employee, she can't tell us what to do, but I can tell <laughs> you that when you recognize and, and you see that item on your ballot when you go to vote in no, on November 8th, you know what to do, and I will leave it at that. So any more shout Oh, a huge shout-out to Matt. What is his last name? Clowbridge. Yes, the IT specialist who helped us out with this because um, I'm getting reacquainted with Google Plus and YouTube Live, and um, he helped you connect with me so that this, in this uh, wonderful interview, and fun interview, could take place. So thanks again, Tammy, and thanks again, Matt. Yes, yes, Matt's pretty amazing. And thank you, Pat, for allowing us to speak about the library. It's my favorite topic. I know it is. <laughs> and with that, folks, you have a beautiful day. Be sure to read Durham, North Carolina's online community paper, the Durham Skywriter, at durhamskywriter.com. And be sure to check out the progress, like I said, durhamcountylibrary.org slash transformation Maine. With that, see you later. Ciao for now. Thank you.